Hey guys, hey guys. what's hey up? Good. How are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video today. Yeah, back to GMJ's Danger Zone, and today we are working on. We've got this uh, 2008 Renault Twingo. Um, we've got to do a couple of bits. Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, a couple of servicing bits, nothing too major. Um, Got some bits down there on the floor. Do you want to grab the camera, G, and show us, show everyone what we got? Right, and down here we have all the service parts. Well, we got oil, we've got engine oil, we got oil filter, we got discs, we got a set of discs there, and a choice of pads. So, so we're going to give you a how-to today on an 08 Twingo, how to do oil and filter. And then discs and pads. We might break it into two videos. We'll see how we get yeah, on. We'll see how we get on with the time. But uh, yeah. Firstly, what we starting with today? Um, well, we're going to start with uh, showing you the jacking points and how to get it onto the four ton ramp. Onto the got, ramp so. that you can see. Yeah. We'll get that. A few little safety bits going. So let's get okay. on with that first of all. Right guys, here we are, so we're going to stick our jacking points under start. the Twingo. Start with the back one. Right, so you've got a little hole there in the bottom of the seal that the original jack should go into. So we will go right about there. These are very strong cars at the best of times. Yeah, uh, not wrong. There isn't a hole on the front of this one. Normally there's an arrow or something indicating but on this one. It's just an extra thick piece of metal, so I think we'll go on that. I think we'll be safe to go there. Right, and that's our jacking points, guys, set. So... At this point, just take it up a little bit, leave the front wheel on the floor. This will have to take the wheels off. We've got three pin mushroom heads. There's a special tool that comes with that, but we don't have that. It's a locking cap yeah. mechanism, yeah. We don't have the tool for that, so... I'll have to make something, is it? Yeah, what we do is we take a, a centre punch, just a flat nose centre punch, and a Bob the Builder hammer, it's not the best one. We uh, centre punch right in the middle of the bolt. A couple of short, sharp taps. And then long nose pliers tend to bend, so I use a pair of side cutters. There we go. That's it, guys, right, just like that. I'm zooming right in so you can see exactly what Jay's doing. There you go. And that's how you get that off. Just yeah, like that. They're a nightmare. They are. Absolute nightmare. There we go. There we go. Without damaging them. Take the car up. The wheels are cracked off. Safety first. Yeah. Make sure you always check when you're taking the car up on a ramp, guys. Hold the wheel with one hand at the bottom and stay stable. There 
Alright guys, and this is what's going on inside here. The back is quite corroded. Yeah, it's been sat for a while, the back is very corroded inside. We'll show you that once they come off. Steering locks on as well. If you can see that, guys, there's a bit of playing the uh, steering track rod there. Yeah, it's not great, but okay. Have to advise about that. Right, so first step: removing the caliper. Well, I think that slider might be serious. Oh, that's moving. Okay, this is the first one removed. Again. Make sure you stay square on it, otherwise it will round off. Did she go or did she round? No, she went. Yeah, there we go. Hopefully we'll get new bolts in with that, but... Yeah. That's not too, That's not too bad. Right. Yeah. You should take the master cylinder cap off for the brake reservoir before squeezing these pistons, but screwdriver and you just leave with the caliper ever so gently and it all becomes loose and then you can lift off you see the piston hanging out we need to push that back to allow for more clearance for the new distant pads once they go in I don't want to leave that hanging too much because it may break it stress the brake pipe next step Pads have got loads of meat on them, it's strange why they'd want them being changed, but customers asked us to do it and they're here, we haven't got to the other side yet, so they might be even worse. So. Right, now we have two bolts around here guys for the carrier, not sure what size they are, 18 possibly, I guess. Yep. Hang on, I'm only 18. Big bar. Just make sure you're on there properly. Don't want to round this bolt off. Just get one or two turns on it so you know it's moving. So much room to turn on this side, but damage the bumper. There we go. Shoot to that chip. Oh. There, we go. there we go. That's the carrier guys taking off. Right, so the first thing you want to do is make sure these sliders move in and out. And they do, so we'll give them a good grease up before we put them back in. That's bent as well and out of shape. Have to see if there's a new one in the kit. Right now we can work on the front securing screws for the disc. Personally I like to give them a nice whack on the front of the disc. If you show that G-Man, there's two T30s there. There's a little bit of grease there, they are there if you can yeah. see them. So there's just a couple of whacks on the side of the disc just to free it up. 
nothing too major. And use, try and use the cheap nasty hammer as a pound through hammer just to hit and hold and stop the bounce. And get that penetration into it. It's not quite the right size, I don't think. It's all yeah, there we go. Just about got away with that. I think they're T40s. And cheap. Yeah. Cheap bolts! Yeah, no, guys. That's right, there we go. Don't use cheap sockets because they never last. And there we go, one really badly rusted disc, which is why we believe they wanted them changed. It's been sat around, yeah. I imagine, this car for quite a while for it to do that, and that's never going to clean up in a million years. Yeah. You could have the discs ground uh, yeah. and redone, because they don't look that old, but... Just, yeah, better off just, changing yeah, them, just put new ones on. Right, so the next step, guys, we've got this... Uh, dry flange, giggity. Um, we've got to clean that up because if the disc is dirty, if the face is dirty, the disc will wobble and it will feel horrible on the car. It will fail an MOT for brake wave. If you get two needles and they basically, they wave of how much brake pressure you put on. Um, they indicate how much brake pressure you put on and if the disc isn't straight, the needles do that. That's why they call it brake wave. Um, so yeah, let's clean this up. It's got to be shiny all over. So I don't know what the best course of action is there to start with. Um, I'll remove the grease, I think, and then go with a file to start with. Something that's definitely dead flat. It's got a bit of build up on there. Just a bit of 80 grit. Ah, oh, that's the one. That's better. That's the one. If I hadn't have filed it, it probably wouldn't have come up like that. So. Coated discs. Right. Oh, it's these coated discs. Obviously, we've got oh, dirty hands, yeah. so we don't want to be touching, touching that. that Not on the broken surface. So pull off the bag as much as you can. Get your hand in the middle there. Slip that off the back a little. I haven't touched that disc once, so yeah. that's how I would do that. Get yourself a screw ready. Still not touching the disc. Just get yourself one of these bolts don't have to be torqued. They're only holding the disc on until the wheel is bolted on and tight. It's the wheel that actually secures the disc. More than enough. We've got to clean the carrier. Guys, so we're about to clean up the carrier for the caliper. And uh, this is how it's done. Not a slight problem, this uh, anti-vibration spring is damaged. Get that out without damaging it. Those two little tiny tabs there that hold it into the gap of that. You can see it's quite bent and out of shape. 
there isn't one in one of these boxes then yeah that's the right pads but no there's no metal clips so we will have to straighten this I think that'll get us there. Mm. Good. We'll soon see. Right. Safety first. Some metal sort of raised up and stuff. Yep. That will make the gap too tight for the pads to sit in. So guys, the new pad slides straight in. Nice and perfect. No whacking about. There we go, look at that. That's why it's so important to remove your stuff. These pads have to move as the brakes wear. Because as the brakes wear, the gap gets thinner and they move. And if they don't move, they seize. Yep. And get locked in place and they hold the brake on. And there we go, one successfully clean side. Right guys, we're back to the wheel now. I'm putting back on the carrier. Tested everything. You know the pads fit nicely. Make sure you wind them in as much as possible by hand. 
Not a cross threading. you've got this protective plate over the front which means that you don't have to copper grease the front the only bit you have to copper grease is the metal on metal contact and where the, where the pad should slide as it wears don't need anything on the front there's your first one, pads in it moves nice and freely, that's exactly what you want so it's, nice, it's tight in its place but it moves it's got movement, it will slide and it won't get seized. Same again, there's another heat pack, uh, heat plate there. So just a tiny, tiny bit on the edge, guys. Don't need, don't want to be seeing this dripping everywhere. And slide in, make sure you're on the belt of sliders. There we go, and it's nice and free. That's moving, and there we go. It's just sliding over. Make sure your metal spring clips are in the right place. That one doesn't look to be. There we go. And it sits in nice and snug. It's only been that easy because the pads were fairly new. If they were old, you'd have to get a G clamp. You'd actually have to squash them back together. Or you can cheat and put a screwdriver in through there and pull to the front of the vehicle, which will open it as well. But Oh no, that's the wrong bolt I'm putting in there, it looks silly me. Yeah. <laughs> that's the wrong one. Didn't think it felt right on the finger. There we go. The sliders are nice and free. We did uh, copper grease them up, but I don't think we caught that on camera. But yeah. We did add a, add a bit of copper grease in there just to Prevent. Normally you'd need a spanner in there, but I'm managing to get away with that, look at that without using the spanner. I'm on top, yeah. Nice. Got away without using the inside spanner. Again, they need to be tight, but not mega tight. It's only an M8 thread. Don't have to be swinging off them. I know it's brakes and you feel like you've got to do them mega tight, but you really don't have to. There we go. I think that's it. It's, uh, make sure our brake hose isn't foul and anything isn't twisted because you've got the caliper around the wrong way. No, that looks good. Something else looks good. We haven't touched the disc, so we don't need to degrease that. That's one good thing about keeping it in the bag when we fit. And then if you get a nice shot around the back of the disc, nice shiny disc. Oh, look at that, guys. Nice shiny disc on there for you. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, look at the comparison. Compared to the old disc. Yeah, and you look at the thickness as well. The thickness is there. Oh, still yeah, there. still there on the thickness, okay. but I don't think it was, it was just... Just rusty. Yeah, it was just not worth... You've got a couple yeah, of pits okay. in it and stuff. There is a slight lip on the inside there as well. Yeah. Not much. It could be ground, okay. but discs are so cheap yeah. nowadays, it's not worth... Buy a new no, one. Just buy a new one, it's not worth messing around with. And then we get money for the scrap of the metal. <laughs> and we can make something out of it later. But there we go guys, that's yeah. one side done. So Obviously we've just uh, got to put the wheel back on. Yeah, and if anything guys, repeat the same process for the other side, exactly the same thing that you've just seen here today. Yeah. And that's your front brakes and discs replaced hey guys right we're just going to show you now what happens if you round off one of these torque nut bolts um and how to get it off with this one rounded off and we couldn't as you can see it just will not freaking hold to un to unlock so this is how you do this if you ever end up in this situation Just 
taking a multi spline bit. It's just slightly bigger than it. Oh, there we go. Oh, nice. There we go. There wasn't much there, but enough. So I've basically just taken a multi spline socket and smashed that. Just enough where it's a bit tighter than the original socket that's gone in there, enough to grip it. Now she's out. Uh, that's it.